So, you grasp my concept or what? I better know, Lance. It seems like a lot of trouble to go to. I mean, if you want to date with Janice, why don't you just go up to her and ask her? Bye. Just ask her, huh? Did you see that look? And Janice has decided not to acknowledge my existence. All you gotta do... Never mind, all you, all you gotta do is... This plan is my only hope. Now, it's simple, and it solves both of our problems. Let me run it for you once more. Oh, just, no. ah, 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 ah. Now, there's gonna be a solar eclipse in a couple of days, so yours truly plans a solar eclipse party, which will immediately follow the big event in the sky. Now, you're gonna be showing us the photographs that you take with your telescope, which means that Annie will be there. And if Annie's there, that means that Gail will be there, too, which sets you up. Because if Gail comes, and Janice will come, too, because she goes wherever Gail goes, right? Just kids trying to do what they should. Growing up in the neighborhood, on the up the street and around the bend, been called the Edison twins. Now every day is a different trial. But they pull through with a lot of style, always getting out of trouble if they get in. Light with the Edison twins. incredible thing was his hair. Did you see his hair? Oh, I would do for hair like that. <laughs> you two should listen to yourself. She sounded like a couple of airheads. Oh, come on, Eddie. We're just having fun. I am not kidding. That guy is amazing. Ah! <laughs> How did I know that you were talking about me? I'm psychic. <laughs> Go ahead. Don't be self-conscious. Probably heard it all before. You are such a car. Oh, Tom, we just met the most amazing guy. He's an astronomer from Harvard who travels all around the world observing solar eclipses. He's brought a whole team of scientists here to do some tests on Wednesday. Oh, really? Yeah, he's looking for some volunteers to help him out. Funny you guys should mention eclipses. Now, Tom and I have this terrific idea. He's holding an information meeting in the Students' Council office at 4 o'clock, and that's what we're doing waiting here. We had this idea for an eclipse party. Now, Tom's going to take some photos. And we thought that you might like... him. Let's get out of here. I don't want to miss a second of this. He was just in Africa two days ago. Aren't you a little bit curious? Come on. I think I've been scooped. It's not over until it's over. Come on, let's go check this guy out. Perception is that because a solar eclipse is underway, it's all right to look at it with the naked eye. Now, although the radiant energy of the sun's lessened during a solar eclipse, you still get retina burn every time you stare at it. Okay. And during a solar eclipse, we stare without even knowing it. Because it's magic. Now, it's part of my responsibility as a traveling scientist to conduct a series of public awareness campaigns wherever I happen to be observing an eclipse, which is where you come in. We're looking for volunteers to help us distribute informational brochures in the community. Now, we're on a shoestring budget, so we can't afford to pay anybody, but I guarantee that if you help us, you won't be bored. <laughs> so if you'd kindly sign up here. This guy from Rio? Right. That's Smitty. I met him a couple of years ago at the Kids Peak Observatory in Arizona. Brilliant astronomer. Now, this guy here is Lyle. He was skiing in Chile when he saw his first eclipse. Totally changed his life. Although a lot of people say there's not much difference between ski bums and eclipse watchers. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, pardon the mess. <laughs> I thought running was your obsession, Gail. When did you get interested in astronomy? Just now. I mean, this guy makes it so concrete. Uh, I'm hoping to talk to him about my plan to photograph the solar corona. Uh -huh. Step right in, ladies. Welcome to Ned Rafferty's Traveling Medicine Show. I'd like to hear about that sometime.
76 in the Soviet Union, 78 in Chile, 84 in Chad. And now this corridor of totality that includes Weston. There's a solar eclipse roughly once every year and a half. You know, the nice thing about my job is that I get to travel all over the world and talk to people when really magic circumstances are making them aware of themselves in a totally new way. Mm -hmm. Any given spot in the world is in the path of totality once every 300 years. Wow, that's amazing. This place was raw wilderness the last time the moon blocked out the sun overhead. Oh, wow, that's incredible. Oh, Sometimes I feel like a time traveler. Like a feather carried along by these cosmic events. I took that. You like it? Oh, uh, yeah. It's kind of like one of the shots I'm going to try and take. We'll get back to the pictures later, OK? Now, I want everybody to come back here and take a look at this measuring apparatus I've designed. There's a funny story about this. I was coming about. And then he said, Sometimes I really feel like a time traveler. Hmm. A feather floating through the cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like quite a spellbinder. Yeah, right. What's that supposed to mean? The guy's a flake, Annie. Oh, it just so happens that he's a world authority on solar eclipses, Ma. Well, I think he sounds neat. In fact, I think you should invite him over for dinner so I can meet him. Really? <laughs> He's a total stranger. Well, not after you talked to him for five minutes. Oh, well, you can't invite him over unless you invite me. Mom, you might have to be excused. Well, don't you want a cookie? Nope. <laughs> I gotta go work on my camera mount. See you, Gail. Well, Tom, didn't you... You know, what I can't figure out is what this Mr. Rafferty wants you girls to do for him. Oh, I forgot the sure gas. Oh, I'll get them for you. Oh, thank you. He wants us to spearhead his public awareness campaign. Is it? It's 20 after 11. You've got to be kidding. Oh. I, I just said goodbye to Gail. Oh. She thinks you're mad at her. Mad at her? Why would I be mad at her? Don't ask me. Did she say anything else? No. She just wants to know if you want to go canvassing with us tomorrow morning. I hadn't thought about it. I gotta get this camera mount finished. <laughs> you can't believe that guy, Andy. Oh, stop it. The guy can't help it if he's handsome. Oh, oh this is great. Gorgeous. gorgeous. I can see the glasses. Oh, I know. Oh, this is great. Now, the object of the exercise here is twofold. First, we try and place one of our handy dandy posters in every store on the main street. Smitty, can you display the posters for the young ladies, please? It looks good on you. Now, the purpose of the poster is simply to get people talking about the eclipse. It doesn't matter if you're in Weston or Warsaw. We found that if you get the main street fired up, then the eclipse turns into a public event that really brings the community together. Comprende? Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> now, they'll all want posters, but before you give them one, make sure they put a pile of these brochures by their cash register. We want one of these to go home in every shopping bag today. Everybody clear on what we're doing? Yeah. yeah. Huh? You guys are great. Go get them. That's far out. How about right here? Here, I'll give you some of these. Maybe you can put them down there for me. Great. Okay. All right. Bye. See ya.
Oh, Dick, can you put these by the tail? Thanks a lot. Wanna get that place over there? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's see. Then I did a couple of years at the Institute for Advanced Studies at Princeton, some heavy particle stuff at the Fermi Institute, and uh, somewhere in there I managed to squeeze in 18 months of skiing in the French Alps. But you're so young. Well, it helps if you can con your way out of high school at 15. <laughs> Why did you get into solar eclipses? Well, I guess I suddenly realized, hey, our sun is the only star that's close enough to study in any detail. And once every year and a half, there's a perfect opportunity to really take a look at what's going on up there. You know, the more I think of it, watching an eclipse seems like such an ancient ritual. Oh, absolutely. Very primal. Mm. Animals and birds settle down as if night has fallen. Birds go to sleep? Mm-hmm. And can you imagine the effect this had on primitive minds? In ancient times, people thought that a solar eclipse signaled the end of the world. Really? Yeah. And a guy like me who could predict them was thought to have supernatural powers. <laughs> like a Superman. Yeah, like Superman. <laughs> Only I'd be selling you all garlic amulets to ward off evil vapors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mom, uh, do we have any garlic? Yes, dear, it's over the stove. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, have you uh, told Mr. Rafferty about your project? Um, not yet. Tom is going to photograph the solar, whatchamacallit. Uh -huh. I'm going to try and get the diamond ring effect on film. Equatorial mount? Uh, yeah, homemade. Motor-driven camera? Uh, motor advance and quick reflexes, if I'm lucky. <laughs> the one thing I can't get straight is where we are exactly in the sunspot cycle. Ah, uh, the sunspot cycle. Oh, oh, excuse me. I'll get it. Oh, no, I'll get it. I ask you a question? No, go ahead. Shoot. Why don't you like that guy? I wouldn't say I don't like him. It's just that... Shh. That young man has what I call chemistry. It's impossible to dislike him. You know what I mean? Annie and Gail still around? Oh, are they driving him back to the trailer? Of course. Chemistry, Paul. Some guys got it. Some guys don't. This around your neck, it'll keep away the evil eclipse vapors. A raw garlic. You'll get used to it. Phew. Phew. Well, I put the poster up, and I'm doing the brochure number. It's just a safety precaution. Some people feel safer wearing them during a solar eclipse. Too much. Well. You never know. There's always that slight possibility that the sun could get stuck behind the moon. And if that happens, uh, you know, it's the end of the world. The guy in the trailer didn't tell you about that, did he? Oh, yeah. He's a personal friend of mine. Well, I'm going to have to tell my old lady about this.
something I can do for you? Oh, Tom, get me worried for a second there. Thought I was apprehending a vandal. What's up? Well, I just saw your guys laying this cable here, and uh, I was wondering what it was for. You know the really great thing about small towns, Tom? People really cooperate with each other. Well, the straight and the skinny is, I'm at a point in my research now where a big mainframe computer would really come in handy, you know, for high-speed calculations. Otherwise, I have to store everything on tape and cram the numbers at a university when I get the chance. And our budget, I can hardly afford a pocket calculator, right? Right. <laughs> so, I walked in, I introduced myself to the bank manager, and I said, sir, I have got a math problem. Can I borrow your computer for a few minutes on Wednesday afternoon? And you know what? He loved it. <laughs> well, uh, what are you going to use it for? Can you keep a secret? I am going to win the Nobel Prize for Physics. Just kidding. Almost. Our team has come up with a new super El Cheapo way of testing Einstein's theory of relativity. What are you looking at me like that for? See, there's these subatomic particles that go faster, and therefore they age slower. Now, if I can prove that they arrive sooner, well, I tell you, partner, I'd hate to be the one to prove old Al Einstein was out to lunch, but I'd love that trip to Sweden. <laughs> you mean you're gonna prove Albert Einstein was wrong? Hey, a guy's got a dream. You think I'm nuts, don't you? Well, you're certainly different from most scientists I've met before. <laughs> <laughs> I call it guerrilla physics. If I waited for a university to fund my research, I'd still be waiting to see my first eclipse. Nature doesn't wait for your check to arrive in the mail. Now, I'm still young enough to believe that I'm gonna come up with the next set of answers. And this eclipse just might be my chance to prove it to the world. Hey, Ned! Hey, I wanna see these pictures you take, okay? If they're any good, I'll submit them to the Harvard Journal of Astronomy. Sometimes they publish stuff like that. Oh, hey, I'd like that. Come on back to the trailer. I want you to see some of my pictures. Now, you and your brother are quite a pair. You know what I found him selling on the main street this morning? Not the garlic. <laughs> <laughs> he was scaring people half to death. What's going on? Doing you a big favor here. Hey, there's a Giants game on the tube this afternoon. My aunt says a total eclipse of the sun happening today. You can't stay indoors and watch football on TV. Oh, now, don't get me wrong, Tom. I love the sun. The sun is terrific, especially when it hides behind the moon. But the Giants, Tom. Hey, how you doing, Paul? Oh, it's great, Lance. Paul's gonna tag along with us. But he's not gonna get in the way, right, Paul? Right. Just leave it. Besides, I'm sick and tired of making a fool of myself around Janice. I'm never even gonna get next to her. Lance, that's not what this is about. I may need your help. Okay, it's Eclipse minus five and counting. Want everyone here to remember the safety tips in our brochure and use them to observe the sun during the period of totality. And hold on to your hats, because you're gonna remember what you see today for the rest of your lives. Hey, the giant scored! Incredible, most beautiful, most unbelievable thing I've. Shh. Look at it! <laughs> Look at that! 
Lance, look! Shh. Trying to do it. Who? What? Paul, Paul, get up here. I want you to keep pushing that button, okay? Come on, Lance. Hey, wait a minute. Quick! all over the country. According to the police, he'd impersonated doctors, lawyers, government officials. Uh, computer crimes, what's that? Well, he was using the bank's computer system to access its security. And once you get into a system like that, you can record all the codes on magnetic tape and use them later to embezzle a branch in a town a thousand miles away. Mm, that's clever. Not quite clever enough, huh? I still can't believe it. How did you know? <laughs> Simple. Here's a guy who claims to be a world authority on solar eclipses, but he doesn't know the first thing about where we are in the sunspot cycle. He had to be a fake. It must be a terrible burden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paul's the clever one. He got some amazing pictures of the diamond ring effect, right? Hey, why don't we go over to Lance's place right now and have a look at him? That sounds like a good, that idea. Like a good idea. Bonsai! As the moon orbits around the Earth, the Earth orbits around the sun. When the moon passes between the Earth and the sun, its shadow falls upon the Earth. People within the shadowed area will see the moon gradually block out the light of the sun, causing an eclipse. Just before an eclipse becomes total, tiny beads of sunlight shining through the lunar valley slip away, leaving a quick flash of sunlight. This is called the diamond ring effect. There's kids trying to do what they should They're growing up in the neighborhood Over the upper street and around the bend They're called the Edison Twins Now every day is a different trial The people grew with a lot of style Always getting out of trouble if they get in Life with the Edison Twins And if you use your head till I always win You know the Edison Twins